This video is provided as supplementary material for courses taught at Howard Community College. And in this video, I'm going to show how to solve a system of equations using the Gauss-Jordan elimination method. We'll do this on a TI-83 calculator. You would do the same thing on a TI-84. So here's the system of equations we're going to be dealing with. It's a 3 by 3 system. And I've already entered that into the calculator as a matrix. If you need help entering matrices into a calculator, I'll post a link here to another video showing you how to do that. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take this matrix and end up with something that looks more like this. In other words, the first three columns are going to form the identity matrix, and then the last column will give me the solutions to the system of equations. So since I want to get a 1 in this upper left position here, what I'm going to do is swap rows 1 and 3, since row 3 already has a 1 in it. So I'll go to second matrix. I'll need to go over to the math menu. And I'm going to press the up button. And what I want to do is a row swap procedure. So that's the C. Go up to C. Press Enter. And for row swap, I have to tell the calculator what matrix I'm dealing with. So that's going to be matrix A. And I need a comma. And I have to tell it what two rows to swap. So I want to swap row 1, put a comma after that. I want to swap that with row 3. I'll press Enter. And now I've got a 1 right where I want it in that upper left corner. Before I can do anything else, I have to save this matrix. So I'm going to go down to the Store button this STO in the lower left-hand corner of the calculator. And that's going to help me store the answer. And I'm going to store the answer back into matrix A. In other words, I'm going to overwrite matrix A with the result of swapping those two, those two rows. Now that I've got a 1 in this upper corner here, I want to turn the other two numbers, the 3 and the 2, the other numbers in that column, into zeros. So what I'm going to do is take the first row, multiply it by negative 3, and then add that to the second row. I'll be adding a negative 3 and a positive 3, and that will get me a 0 right over here where the 3 is. So I'll go back to the matrix menu, go over to Math, press the Up button, and what I want to do is multiply a row and add it to another row. So that's that's F times row plus. So I'm going to multiply this one by a negative 3. So I'll enter negative 3, a comma. I have to tell it what matrix I'm using. That's matrix 1. Then I have to tell it that I'm multiplying row 1 and I'm adding it to row 2. So now I've got a 0 starting out that second row, which is what I wanted. Once again, I've got to store this. So I'll store this. It's going to be matrix 1 again, or matrix A. Now that it's saved, I can go on and take this 2 in row 3 and turn that into a 0. So I'm going to use the same operation as before, the times row plus. But now I'm going to multiply the first row by negative 2. And I want to go to matrix A. I'm multiplying the first row, and I'm adding it to the third row. Oops. When you get an error, let's see what I did wrong. If you get an error, if you press go to, the calculator will usually tell you what you did wrong. Oh, because I've got a 1 and a 3, but I forgot to put the comma in between. So let's put a comma there, then the 3, then press enter, press enter. Okay, so now I've got a 1, a 0, and a 0. The first column is the way I want it. Let's store that. So once again, we're going to store as matrix A. 
And now I want to go on to the second column. So I want the second element in the second row, second column, to be a 1. I've got a 7 there now. So what I want to do is multiply that row 2 by 1 7th. 1 7th, in other words, the reciprocal of 7, 1 7th times 7, will turn that into a 1. Okay, so we'll go into the matrix menu. And I'm just using times row. I'm not adding it to anything. So that's E. I'm multiplying by 1 7th. So that's 1 7th, a comma, matrix A, another comma, and I'm multiplying row 2. Okay, so now I've got the one where I want it. And we can either take, I'm going to have some decimals in this. If you want to copy down the steps as you're doing them, you might want to turn these decimals into fractions. I'll show you how to do that. Just going to press math, and the fraction is number one. So that takes the answer, turns it into a fraction. If I press enter again, the decimals have turned into fractions. Okay, so let's store that. I'm going to keep storing these as matrix A. And now I want to take the other two elements in column 2 and turn them into zeros. So to turn this negative 2 in row 1 into a 0, I could take the second row, that's where my 1 is, multiply that by 2 and add it to row 1. So let's go back into the menu. That's going to be a times row plus operation. So I'm multiplying by 2 multiplying matrix A and I'm multiplying row 2 and adding it to row 1. So now I've got the 0 over there. I'm not going to bother to change this into a, into a fraction. We'll store this and we want to finish the second column by turning this 9, the one in row 3, into a 0 also. So once again I'll do times row plus. This time I want to take that 1 in the second row, multiply it by negative 9, deal with matrix A. That was row 2, and we're adding that to row 3. Okay, so now the second column is complete also. I've got a 0, a 1, and a 0. We'll store that. And we want to deal with the third column. At this point, it would probably be a good idea to turn these into fractions so we know what we're dealing with. So let's go to math, fraction. And now I can see that in the third row, third column, where I want to 1, I've got 25 over 7. So the reciprocal of that would be 7 over 25. So let's multiply that row by 7 over 25. Seven divided by twenty five. It's matrix A. And whoops, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want times row plus, I want just times row. Okay. There we go. Okay, so once again, seven divided by 25 matrix A and I'm just multiplying row 3 
Okay, so now I've got a 1, right where I wanted in row 3. Let's store that. And take a look at what this looks like as a fraction. So I want to take the negative 11 sevenths and turn that into a zero. So I'm going to multiply row 3 by positive 11 sevenths and adding that, add that to row 1. This operation actually takes a lot less time when you're doing it on your own and not describing all the steps and after you've practiced it a bit. So I'm multiplying by 11 sevenths matrix 1 that's row 3 and I'm adding it to row 1 so we've got the 0 where we wanted it, let's store that and we're just about done And let's once again see what the fraction is that I'm dealing with. So in row two, I've got five sevenths. I want I want to take row three, multiply it by negative five sevenths. Matrix A. And that's row 3. And we're adding that to row 2. Okay? And what we've got here is our completed problem. The first three columns form the identity matrix. And the last column tells us that X was equal to 5, y was equal to negative 2, and z is equal to 3. Okay, so like I said, this takes a lot less time, A, when you're not describing it to somebody else like I'm doing, and B, after you've practiced it a bit. So make sure you're comfortable with this before you go into a test. Uh, do plenty of examples, and things should work out fine for you. That's about it. Take care. I'll see you next time.